In Nervous Device, Catherine Wagner takes inspiration from William Blake's bounding line to explore the poem as a body at the intersection between poet and audience. Using this figure as a model for various sexual, political, and economic interactions, Wagner's poems shift between seductive lyricism and brash fragmentation as they negotiate the failure of human connection in the twilight of American empire. Intellectually informed, yet stubbornly insistent on their own objecthood, and taking a bewildering variety of forms, the poems of Nervous Device express a self-conscious skepticism about the potential for human connection, even as they maintain an optimistically charged eroticism, a sentiment best, perhaps best illustrated in the title of one poem, Arrived Detaching Toward the Union. The poems illustrate all the connotations of nervous, links and communication, apprehension, the possibility of failure, but a failure that is embodied, sensual, and unpredictable. Uh, as in Unclang, when she writes, writing a poem is like reaching like, two prosthetic limbs out as far as you can on either side to grab something in front of you. You can't grab it, but maybe you'll take flight. As Wagner herself states in a recent interview, the work is nervous in terms of self-consciousness, nervousness, but also nervous in terms of responsiveness and reactiveness. A nervous device could be a device with which we use to communicate a phone, a computer, or language. I wrote to my editor that the nervous device is body, handheld, connection, poem. Indeed, the poems do not shy away from the body. Instead, they seem to revel in it from yeast infections and tumors to boogers and vitreous eyeballs. The connection is always visceral, corporeal, be it through speech or touch, all the inefficiencies of the device that is the human. Now Wagner asks that we, all readers, take a union breath and trust her. That trust is not mislaid. Catherine Wagner's collection of poems include, collections of poems include Nervous Device, My New Job, Macular Hole, and Miss America, and a dozen chapbooks, including Imitating, uh, she has performed widely in the U.S., England, and Ireland. Her poems and essays appear or are forthcoming in Abraham Lincoln, Lana Turner, New American Writing, 1913, How To, Cambridge Literary Review, Soft Targets, Action, Yes, and many other magazines. An anthology she co-edited with, Re with Rebecca Wolf, Not For Mothers Only, was published by Fence in 2007. She's Associate Professor of English at Miami University in Ohio. Please welcome Catherine Wagner. Paisley's taller than me. <laughs> Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. It's really great to be back here. Um, I was a student at Utah and finished up in 2000, I think. And it's just beautiful here and a great pleasure to be back and see some of my teachers and um, meet Michael. And I'm so grateful that you had me here. And what a pleasure to read with Paisley. It was a beautiful reading. So, all right. I do, I want to say something about the intro, which I thought was great, um, really generous and good. And I just want to read the, the passage that you took the um, all readers take a union breath trust me thing from, because um, the reason I want to read it is that I really, really don't want readers to trust me at all. I want to be completely untrusted. Um, it's very important that you not trust me at all. And, um, <laughs> I'm going to read just that passage really quickly. Instead of tearing, this is from a longer poem, but instead of tearing down the poem, scrape it D and C and exit, I made more shapely bobs that pleasure me, hum crystal when touched. All readers take a union breath, trust me, for I started to know, sorry, I'm going to read that again. All readers take a union breath, trust me, for I started to know what I was doing in a poem, the intuition track laid out prior, poem aligns and rolls, if rickety, head lit, and through the forest, when it instead should unalign and disembark the trees. I've been, I'm gonna sing a couple of um, medieval lyrics tonight. I've been having a lot of fun lately. I really love Middle English lyrics, and I've just started to write songs, write songs for them, write tunes for them, to hang out with them. So my voice is not very good right now. It's really froggy from airplanes and not enough sleep. <coughs> but uh, the first one I'll do is called Now Go With Sun Under Wood, which is a really famous poem. Some of you guys probably uh, know this poem way better than me, and you have to forgive me when I do these poems for talking as if they were in 
in, in I don't know how to pronounce, I never learned how to pronounce Middle English, so it's just, I'm just going to ruin it. But um, they're a little more understandable that way, I think. And now Glow Sun Underwood, if you don't remember it, it's got uh, 23 words in it total, but it's got actually only 15 words in it because eight words are used twice. Seven words are only used once, but of those words, I think three rhyme. So they're, they have a doubleness about them. And then there are also words in the poem that have several meanings. For example, it says, um, me rueth Mary thy fair rude, um, which means thy fair face, but also means the, thy fair cross. So there's a reference to the fortunate fall there. And then because the cross comes into the poem, when you get the line, now goeth sun under tree, the tree takes on a, a cross, it becomes a cross. And um, it's, you see Jesus maybe carrying the cross up, up to where he was crucified, or maybe you see him coming down off the cross to Mary waiting for him when he's dead. Um, so, now goeth sun under wood, me with Mary, thy fair rood. Now goeth sun under tree, me with Mary, thy son and thee, thy son and thee. This is called Ta, which is... Um, I thought it was just English, but someone told me recently that it's all Northern Europe for thank you. I put the diorama in the boat, color TV, showing the rerun, or and or, let it stink way down, and coral grew there, covered it or, let miserere deep, be mine for air. Make a machine for mastering self. Grow your disposal. Chastity smell. In a room, rectangle air, aloud, breathing there, fantasies. Lay down your cherry bright. You know how to make an asshole with your fingers touching? That's cherry picking stance. The room is detachable pod. Walk it into disposal. Find the room in terror, in terror or terror. Filter green, the color made by birds. Under time, they cull it from the airy. Feel like a terror maestra. See the cloud bear cherries. Oh my god. Let's get married. Mm. Blink whole head in identificatory trance. When you don't see what I would have you see, you sad me. Open, druthers, for I j'adore your piggy light. Walking uphill in my fetish purse, who am I talking to? Thunder and distance. It's good to imagine audience. Do you want to come in and sit down? Please come in. Please come in and sit down. Yeah. It's good to imagine audience. <laughs> I hoped, I hoped to write a very long poem, five pages typed, hung water bottle on belt loop, off I went. Tall bluster trees, I welcome you to the land of cheesy me. Skull face cloud and lace cloud pulled across it by storm wind, thunder, ink of leather, heavy bloom, growl in reverb valley, master, chew my head. Here's the rain now, properly lined up, stab, gleam, thunder song. Gonna stick you in the fire. You'll be a bright gold baby. Hey, lightning, hey, hey, thunder. Gonna be a bright gold baby. Blue wagon lady flyer. Write a letter when you get there. 
Hey, noon and fire lady, make us a blue liquid snowball. Make a planet built of lightning. Learn how in lightning basket weaving class at the Community <laughs> Art Center. I basket wove a burning bush. Spoke to Moses here, sir. Why'd you let me talk to God? I kissed her outside, lost my manners. I kissed her inside, lost my face. But God, she lost her whole fat body. She lost her great big cold frame. I asked for a WYSIWYG format. She said she couldn't do. I said, I want to see what you look like. She said, you soaked already do. I said, I couldn't see nothing. She gave me paper, draw me. I drew and saw it, saw you too. Felt honey lull along the trench. I called it her, I called it you. Why do I think I don't know? I know just as well as I do. All to use artifice. Make life real for me and you. Unclang. I would like never to be obscure. I understand why I was explaining is a bore and flattens slang. So it takes experience to write a real poem that is well lit, which is not the same as clear drinking water from a jar, old baby doll in bed, broke and well fed. Lying here is great, I said. You are not Nowhere, stay up all night, you sunshine bleat. I could have moved to, mm, moved to, mm. my more glamorous avatar did, she willy did, but when she was there, look out, she looked in her pocketbook at the mirror in the snapshot clamshell, the mirror was distwatted, curved along the shell wall. A weirdo pronunciation from New York, distwatted. <laughs> That's just this toy bin, and it's more exciting than the fucking infernet. <laughs> Writing a poem is like reaching two prosthetic limbs out as far as you can on either side to grab something in front of you. You can't grab it, but maybe you'll take flight. <laughs> but I'm not trying to grab anything in front of me when I write a poem. Get that kitty. <laughs> Innocent money. I must maintain our separation, boys, so that you will continue to invest. I like this stage and would like to extend it. Your lover is beyond the proscenium arch. You are audience and play in your own play. She is, I am, handling my carcass with strings. We seek admiration. At some point, early in the playing, I enter my carcass to embrace you. Our proscenium foreheads touch, and I am shot with fear of boredom. Actually, you are controlling my carcass. <laughs> I'm entering my passcode so I can see how long I've been. Okay. <laughs> this is a, a, the requisite oil spill poem. <laughs> a well is a mine, a good belongs to me. Wide winged heaven, mowed my garden down, black lily puddle. Let commerce suck brights from all dally halls and string them Christmas mines. Will folded, made a napkin, old agendas used to clean my mouth of will. I built this tone, ironically, it goes against itself. Who is responsible for the oil spill in the Gulf? Did you drive here? I had no choice. Took your choice. If we don't have oil, we'll need slaves, or none of us will ever read or paint. <laughs> I don't see what's wrong with not getting paid if you're getting fed and housed. I didn't get to choose whether I drove here. I'll be a slave if it will save the planet. Okay, you're a slave. 
textbook will say, slavery became both colorblind and trendy. <laughs> Whether this was coincidence is matter for, but only one in 10 men is colorblind. The rest of us might use color to decide who slaves will be. De jure, white contains all the colors. De jure, it won't be that noticeable if we don't start with white people. <laughs> Anybody here who's de facto black? <laughs> I'm afraid to speak for anybody in a different identity category. <laughs> and how many slaves will you need to maintain your standard of living sans oil? A slave for the bicycle jitney, a lawn mowing slave, a slave to cook and load compressed wood pellets into the wood stove. I can do that. But then we'll need a slave to weed and clean. Three slaves per household? Three to five. Will you be one of mine? Let's all take turns. Can't come to your birthday party, it's my slave week. <laughs> need categories of us. A use for identity. A feudal system stabilized by international trade. But freedom is a value. Say has a value and it can be traded. Freedom times need equals reality. Freedom over reality equals art. Then art times reality equals freedom. Freedom over art equals reality? Where art is politics, where am I to go? Oh, hey, 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 Johnny, where am I to go? I am where to go. I am where to go, dear Johnny. What are you to me? Hey, 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 Johnny, I'll tell you when you're mine. Go our separate way together. Tell me when you're mine. Have a um, bangle bracelet on that I could borrow. Is it? Yeah, that, I don't think that. Oh yeah, perfect. You do. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, this might not. This. Oh, yeah, it'll work. Okay, this will work. This. This is a poem that uh, I wrote to. It. Sometimes I write poems that are have to be on objects, and the this poem was written. It was supposed to be written on the outside of a bangle, which I forgot to bring with me. Um, and it's, it's bar the, all the text is borrowed from an essay uh, called Shakespeare's Preservation Fantasy by Aaron Coonan that was in PMLA, and a poem by Alice Nolly from Culture of One. And um, yeah, it's called Capitulation to the Total Poem. And this is supposed to be round. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Capitulation to the Total Poem. If you put the hand inside, she will pop out. The imp to preserve culture wriggles under the worn. A part capable of dying capitulates to total enclosure in poem. Remove her poem from test subjects. Discard intercourse. Oh, hovering over the desert at midnight. Poem, removed from victims. Extra personal. Never mind. The terms given you were breathe, that starts it. Then do as you're told to please them and don't to discover your mind. Then you are imperfect, child, a wanton. Whence came this agon, snot and tears, hot face and wretched powerless, except to cause annoy, so cause annoy.
Green cog. One who could not smell came up to the other's apartment, threw pebbles at the window, after the other had masturbated. The other, not having washed her hands, brought one a beer. One was intimate with the other's smell and wanted to be intimate with the other and was and did not know it. <laughs> that old factory. <laughs> Regarding the use, value, and exchange value of orgasms with a list of orgasm analogs, viz. Dead servant, smell garnet, drain goes down drain. I let him stay with me two years past patience because he could conjure black silk dragged through blood brain barrier, black silk dragged through blood brain barrier, cog railway axiom. <laughs> Use value or exchange value? He traded orgasms, I traded love stance, we lost our shirts. <laughs> Come, normative anomaly, repeatable difference, costly and prized. Normative wedge, in conscious norm. Come, oddity, trade you for memory. Honey, I love you for this fine minute. Honey, your eyes have gone really buggy. I'm frightened, <laughs> anticipant. Oh, hell, that's Polaroid ripped back before it's developed. Sticky firework, chemical, gel burnt electrodes. Suffer the, suffer the, jailed astrolodal. Terminate its head. I'm through with you. Pleasure. When the coagulant future returns, which is instant, even as happiness roams past the edges of nerve into room, the feeling's unsellable, never gets into poem. I left my topography map on the picnic table, rained in the Tetons, exposed their mache. I see I'm aggressive, weirdly violent, cold-fingered, won't mind being otherwise, tell warm to me. Goddamn these dactyls, they crush lay erotica. Knee-jerk dactylic, see? Needing to pee, but I'm pushing this longer. <laughs> List of orgasm metaphors, commodity catalog, at outset of poem, tried to turn time to material, re-experienceable, come back and see me sometime. If this poem is not desirable, but you've made yourself hear it, you're at a reading, you have a sane reason, dear friend, that's a condom. You've inoculated your cock against insanity. <laughs> I'm, I'm figuring reader as male. Why'd I do that? Friend, there's a reason. Really have to pee now. To let pleasure be. Um, you guys know fools in the frith? It means um, foul, fowls in the frith, it means birds in the forest. Birds in the forest, fishes in the sea. And I, mon wax a wad, means I am going crazy. Much sorrow I walk with for beast of bone and blood. And beast could be a beast, as in an animal, or it could be best of bone and blood. So it could be a lover, it could be Jesus, it could be an animal. Fools in the frith, fishes in the flood, 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 fools in the frith, fishes in the flood. And I'm on wax award. Much sorrow walk I with for be. of bone and blood. Fool
fools and the frith fishes in the flood 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 fools this is a um, ripoff of a or rewrite of a famous Robert Duncan poem called The Meadow that goes often I am permitted to return to a meadow and it literalizes the, that poem or it literalizes the meadow sometimes I am permitted to return to a meadow which is a place where logs were cut that tenders a view a mountain I would not see for the trees Unscratched by thistles, I stroll a wood chip road down meadow. A rush of air past branches, wind on skin, unsimultaneous. The road is to my eye, unsightly, and yet it shares cause with the meadow. That is a place of forced permission. The ugly neck or making bank. Robins and cardinals blurt between furrows of storm. A way energy has of being, it can caress itself. I know you're in pain. You're in pain. If you're in no condition to consent, it's rape. If you're incapable, of unconsciousness or intoxication. I still shouldn't rape you, system. This is a 15th century one, and you know this one. Oh, western wind, when, I'm gonna start that one over again, I went way too high. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, western wind, when will, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble. Oh, western wind, when wilt thou blow the small rain down, can rain Christ, that my love was in my arms, and I in my bed again. Um, okay. The this book's um, working title was the Bounding Line. You mentioned that title in your intro, or that line in your intro. A um, long time ago, I went to see an exhibition at the Tate, um, uh, Tate Britain that, re, that put up Blake's only exhibition that was held during his lifetime. It, it was, uh, that, this exhibition was a, a massive failure. Almost nobody went, and the people who went didn't like it. But Blake wrote this very polemical, it was also held above his brother's hosiery shop in Golden Square. Uh, and Blake wrote a very polemical essay for the catalog for the show, and in it he um, was very insistent. He was he was PO'd about the trend at the time for using color and shadow kind of smearily to create shape, and he insisted on the importance of the bounding line to differentiate figure. And when um, Jim Sportsman interviewed me about audience and what is the bounding line. At some point, we discussed my tilted cervix and said that if you, if she put in his finger just a few inches, she would feel it here. And I stuck out my fist and had her put his figure in it, which freaked him out, though not as much as it would have if I had offered her my vagina to put his <laughs> finger in. And uh, later in the interview, we referred back to that moment when I wanted, and she went along to um, imply to the audience that we were taking his finger and putting it in my vagina and touching my cervix. We said, for the sake of the interview, of course, of course for the sake of the interview, <laughs> to imply boundary. Thank you very much. Good night.